Hi there, welcome to the September 2023 solar update. But before we get into the stats, let's just remind ourselves of my solar panel system. Uh, so 14 Jinko 390 watt panels, uh, totaling 5.4 kilowatts, 10 on the south and four on the east, and a solar edge four kilowatt inverter. So that's the solar side. On the battery side, we've got the three kilowatt AC inverter and the eight kilowatt Gen 1 Give Energy battery. And then of course, I've got a few extra bits and bobs such as the My Energy Eddy heating the hot water, the Harvey and the Herb, and the Hypervolt EV charger. Right, so this is uh, the solar production from the Solar Edge uh, control panel for September. Now you might spot there that I've got some gaps the 10th, 11th and 12th did not record any generation. Uh, that was mainly because I had some sort of internet uh, switch problems at the time. Um, I did reset the switch and I think it just kind of solved itself, but it did seem to take two or three days to kind of write itself. I didn't have to end up uh, resetting or rebooting the inverter or anything like that. Uh, but luckily the Give Energy system kind of, uh, which is holding my battery, and the AC inverter that kind of recorded more or less the generation. Um, so we'll plop that in and see what we get to get the probably more like a real figure out of it. So overall, it it was a hit and miss kind of month, really. Um, the best day of the month was uh, the 4th of September with 32 kilowatt hours, which was really good. And then the following day, 31 and another 31 there. Um, but then we got to like halfway through the month and it then became a little bit more disappointing we, we were kind of getting under or around 20 kilowatt hours a day and obviously we had these kind of really uh really odd bad days as well like there on the 19th seven the day after nine and then nine again um and eight so i have kind of started to set the battery percentage to be a little bit higher now i used to kind of set it through the summer to be a minimum of 30 percent um, I think I'm going to probably just max it out now at maybe 100 from now on. Um, although the weather is supposed to be getting fairly good for a week or so or a weekend or so in October. But with the kind of days drawing in a bit, I think I'll probably just, uh, you know, charge it fully to 100% and probably start scheduling some um, of the eddy to come on and heat the hot water uh, before... Uh, turning on the gas boiler which I don't know if we're going to do that really until kind of mid October because it's not cold cold yet certainly got two or three weeks yet before we need to uh, turn on the gas boiler I believe right so here's the uh, completed month with uh, these three numbers were that were missing were extracted from the give energy uh, online dashboard they're very very close to kind of what solar edge would have uh, generated slightly under but if we had those three extra days in then the total isn't kind of 555 that solar edge uh, recorded altogether it's actually 60149 so 601 kilowatt hours for the month so let's have a look and see what that looks like compared to last year so this is the month by month on the uh, solar edge screen so if we can see september even though it's lying 555 i recorded 601 in the end last year was actually 530 so an extra 70 kilowatt hours this year um which is good because last month um or july and august we were down a fair bit as you can see there so having a september that's kind of given us you know an extra 70 kilowatt hours is pretty good so how did we use all of this kind of power that we generated? Well, not on the car this month. No, we did not uh, use the solar power to charge the EVs anymore. And the big reason for that is now we're getting paid 12 pence a kilowatt hour by Scottish Power to export our energy. And we're importing the energy at seven and a half pence overnight on Octopus Intelligent. So yeah, you guessed it. Uh, it's cheaper to actually fill the cars at night now and actually export during the day as opposed to me uh, using all I could during the day on solar because I was only getting four pence export through Octopus. So this is why we've got this massive uh, peak uh, in September when we use 273 kilowatt hours uh, overnight uh, 
through the hypervolt for charging the cars. So that times seven and a half P gives us 20 pounds uh, 48 pence for charging uh, the two cars for the month. So as you can see, there's a big difference there between, uh, you know, obviously last month, 88, when we were charging the cars from solar, but now we're not. Right, so this is the My Energy uh, Eddy dashboard online. And you can see at the top here, we used 126 kilowatt hours, went into the Eddy to heat the hot water for the month of September. Uh, admittedly, that wasn't all solar. Uh, some of that was me actually... Uh, setting a schedule with the eddy which you can do on the app uh, so that you can charge your or sorry heat your water overnight on cheap rate uh, and also boost it if you want to uh, so every day we used a fair bit uh, sort of at different times you can see here during the day 12 o'clock and stuff this is when i was actually using um, the eddy although different times there at two three in the morning i had a little boost so if you see like a double spike you kind of know that I did it overnight here, especially towards the end of the month more. Uh, that looked like a pretty good day where it got a lot during the day. Um, so yeah, so towards the last kind of week or so, two weeks of the month, I was kind of charging it a bit more overnight as well to give it a boost. Uh, probably won't be using it as much at all when the gas boiler comes on, but I'd like to kind of compare the two to see if uh, it's sort of cheaper on the gas. But the gas has been reduced a little bit now. It's kind of 6p a kilowatt hour from the beginning of October down from like 7 pence. Yeah, so in total for the month, uh, 126.1 kilowatt hours in the Eddy. So this is the uh, Octopus app because they still haven't fixed my online uh, graphing for my electric account uh, so this is September 352 kilowatt hours were used uh, I can't download the data still at the moment either to tell you how much was actually overnight and how much was kind of day rate which is also a shame but you can see at the beginning of the month we didn't use hardly any for the first kind of 10 days of September we were here but I think the sun was pretty good uh, and we kind of changed uh, tack a little bit. We weren't kind of charging the EVs um, so much at the beginning of the month, but we did after that. And you can see then the larger kind of spikes when I started to uh, pre, re, you know, pre-charge the battery overnight on cheap rate, and used to charge the uh, Eddy hot water as well on the cheap rate as well. And we've still also started to kind of uh, put the dishwasher and the washing machine on at night on the seven and a half p rate on intelligent um as opposed to you know using the solar during the day we're, we're happier to let it go out the door at 12p because it makes more kind of sense um from a money perspective really so i can't break down uh, the grid import from octopus because i still can't get into my raw data but i'm going to say that everything was on cheap rate even though we know it probably wasn't and i would have probably had a few kilowatt hours on uh the expensive rate just due to the ramping up and ramping down of the system but 352 kilowatt hours for the month times seven and a half pence on intelligent overnight comes to 26 pounds and 40 pence uh, but for the month i actually exported 145 kilowatt hours at the new uh, scottish power 12p and uh, for the month that was 17 pounds and 48 pence so not too bad for the gas we didn't use any gas yet uh, i haven't turned on the boiler still heating the hot water from the eddy and the standing charges for the gas uh 27.47 pence a day times 30 days gives us 824 and for the electric it's actually 42 pence now on intelligent uh, for me anyway in my postcode region times 30 days gives us 12 pounds and 60 pence so still 20 good 20 pounds for the standing charges Right, so the gas in total was just £8.24 for the standing charge and the electric was £26.40 of what I actually spent plus the £12.60 for the standing charge but then minus the £17.48 that we got for exporting gives us a total with the standing charge of £21.52 for the month uh, and with a total altogether for the gas and the electric £29.76. Now, last month, I actually uh, only used 50 kilowatt hours of uh, electric that came to £3.75 roughly overnight. 
uh, but we did export only 92 kilowatts um, or 92 kilowatt hours in August. Uh, so we did actually export a lot more this month, but that is the plan or not really going into winter exporting more because there won't be any, but uh, next year when the sun shines again, probably be exporting more uh, with the high rate, whether I move back to octopus and get the 15 P rate that they now offer for intelligent customers from the 1st of October, we'll have to wait and see. So that was it for September 2023. Uh, not a bad month really considering and obviously better than last year, which is really encouraging. Obviously there were some bad days, but I suppose you're gonna sort of get the odd one uh, coming into autumn. I think the big difference this month was that we charged the cars a lot more and that's where the extra cost came in. So we were kind of, uh, we charged 273 kilowatt hours this month versus 89 kilowatt hours um, last month in the cars. Um, and obviously, and that difference in price was about thirteen pounds. So if we hadn't have done that, then I think we would have basically, or basically broken even, sort of on the electricity cost. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a like, and don't forget to leave me a comment with what kind of output your solar setup got in September. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll speak to you soon.